Hi, this is Debbie from Debbie's Crafty Hands. Welcome everybody. Um, special welcome to all my new subscribers. Um, I need to apologise to you for um, the lateness of our previous video. This was due to partly towards work commitments, but also we had a very poorly pussy cat and um, she needed our attention, so we didn't get the edit done as quickly as we would have liked to have done. The good news is she's now much better and um, doing fine. So that's, that's that. So today we're going to be doing, <laughs> I know, boring cards, um, but I'm going to show you how I take from an old card and scavenge the bits to, to reuse it, um, what my processes are and what I look for in the, the front of a card or even sometimes the inside of the card with the greetings etc. But today we're concentrating on the front of the card and go through my process step by step as how I produce a card in a certain style. We're dealing with ladies cards today but um, in future episodes I will do sort of more masculine cards. So we're going to go down to the desk screen and I shall show you what's what. I have some card bases in front of me. I tend to use different colour bases. This one's colour on one side, white in the inside, so that's quite a useful thing if you've got double-sided, double-coloured card because then you can write your inside. Depending on the colour, you might not be able to show your message inside very easily. So. I'll show you how I did it. What we're going to work with is A6 card and it is five and three quarter by four and a quarter, which is A4 halved and then folded again. So I've got an A4 piece of paper here. So what I do in my guillotine, uh, not guillotine, my cutter, is I have, if you can see, we have cut and fold written on the thing and that's just to indicate to me the position that I need to put my paper in order to make the card bases. So I put the edge of the card onto the cup which is just on 15 centimetres, just under six inches. But that's the place I've, I've found that's the best way or the mid middle of the card when I've folded it that's where it's come to. So I'm going to just cut that and I'll do that with all three pieces I've got here. It's give me, I've got a beige, a pink and a white piece of card just to give me some colour choices. So I've got them all into half A4 size pieces now. Now I move my orange piece up so I can't do it by mistake, believe me, it has happened. And then go to where I've got my fold and that is around four and two eighths or ten and a half centimetres. Now I get my other slidey which just does a, an indent which gives me a fold and I fold inwards and then I have my card base. So that three pieces of card gives me six card bases. Now the white card is slightly thicker than the other card but it still works just as well. So this paper cutter I got uh, from Hobbycraft and it's lasted me absolutely years. And that's that bit done. Now, I'll squeeze the folds tight. I'm just using the handle of my scissors to give the fold a nice crease. Holds it in place better. Right, so that's our bases made. Put them to one side and I keep a stock of bases all different colours so I can just pick them out as I need them. Right so the next stage is matting. So I'll show you an example of ones I've made. So this one I've used matting and I've used a piece of card and then put a sticker over the top. Lots of layers coming towards the middle of the card. Now I can very easily put thank you, happy birthday, get well or whatever. So I leave the cards very generic until I decide what I'm going to use them for. So I don't often straight away put the wording on and the same with the inside. And that gives me a blank canvas so that I can choose where the card's going and then put the words on. This one, it's just in the corner, it's just, just for you. Again, it's a card base. 
you might have to put an insert paper or use a metallic pen or something to do the writing on the, the actual inside of the card. But this has been taken from a card front and just placed on. This one doesn't have the matting and this one doesn't have the matting. But again, I've used one of my die cut shapes to cut out the card and that says happy birthday down the side. I don't normally do that, but it fitted there nicely. So I thought, well, why not? This one, again, I've got flat matting, which is just a different colour card, as opposed to the more raised matting. I'm not sure if you can see from this angle the different layers coming down. It's basically a piece of cardboard that I wrap with wrapping paper inside of envelopes, whatever I can get my hands on, and then use that to put on the card to give it some depth and body. Well, I'll show you how I do the wrapping of the matting now. So I have a piece of envelope. You may recognise the pattern. And I love all these patterns because they're very neutral and they make a good background. So I have a piece that's about an inch, two centimetres, three quarters of an inch, something like that. It doesn't matter as long as you can fold it over the base. And the base is, you're going to ask me what the measurements are so it is three and a half inches by five and a half inches now i found that works good with the a6 size card and gives me a, a nice border without swamping it so i will put glue on the cardboard as opposed to the um paper and then I know exactly where my surface area is. So you have to be quite generous with stick glue. A lot of people find that the glue doesn't stick very well. It's because they're probably not putting enough on. And then right side facing towards you and sit it down on the card. And I just smooth it over with my thumb. And then I use a card just to smooth it on. Now this is on a bit wonky, but it doesn't matter because it will straighten out in the long run. So what I need to do now is just cut a little triangle off the end, but not right up close to the corner. So you've got a couple of millimetres that can be folded over on the corner. So you go up close to it, but not on it. Now, I'm going to use my Kalal glue for folding over, but you can just fold it and tape it if you want, because it's not going to show. So I'm going around all the edges to get my crease. Another way of creasing is you can lift the cardboard and use the edge of the cardboard to give you a crease, like that. And that's what we've got. So now I'll go around with my glue. A little bit of Kalal on flaps and stick my flaps down. And I try and put some on the edge of the cardboard as well. And then that helps the sides stick and not bulk out. Bring it nice and tight. Right, so we have our neutral background glued on. And there we go. So I'll show you a selection of the ones that I've done recently. This was just some papers that I had on hand. I don't know where I got them from. They may have been out of a magazine. You know, sometimes you get sample papers from a magazine. They might have been from their scrapbooking thin paper. I'm not entirely sure where I got it from, but it's quite a, a small pattern. This one was wrapping paper. This again was wrapping paper. I did several of those because I quite like that. And again, this one, several of those because using it up. And some purple. That was a scrapbooking paper. That was wrapping paper. This one was the inside fly paper of an encyclopedia. And I just love the sort of cloudy pattern to it. Again, some more scrapbooking papers. So there's a lot of options that you can use to cover your matting with. And I just have a dock of card ready if I've not got much mojo and I want to use up some wrapping paper or you know bits and bobs that I see laying around I thought well that make a nice matting tend to use small prints rather than the large prints or plain colours otherwise they will swamp the cards so how I layer it all up I choose a base so with this one I've chosen 
a red base card with an orangey red matting. So as you can see, there's about a quarter of an inch all the way around. Now this card looks like it needs straightening up on the edge here because it's a little bit wibbly wobbly. So I'm just going to straighten up this edge. That's OK there, but that. this bottom edge is a little bit unlevel. So I'm just going to trim that bottom off and that's folded fine. So I've chosen this image to cut out to place in the centre. I might also look at possibly putting a little bit of lace under before I put the matting on or ribbon so I can fold it into a bow. So that's things to think about before you actually glue it down. Do you want something under the matting to come up and over? Do you want something coming out the side or the bottom, top, whatever? So when you're doing your design, plan it out in your head. Lay it out first. See if you like it before you glue everything down. And if you can't remember what you would put where, then take a photograph of it if possible. And then you can refer to the photograph to put it all back together again once you've unlayered it to start gluing it. So I'm going to use my cutter to cut out this square. And you can also do things like a, a jaunty angle. So you could have your matting sort of on a slight slant and then have your picture on top on a slant going the opposite way. So you could play around with your angles as well. For my purposes, I'm going to do it level like that. I need to find something to go on this corner. Now we have a feather. Would that be interesting, do you think, to go to the back? No, this doesn't look quite right. That's the sort of thing I was looking for. I was thinking maybe a little bit of, we'll hide that crumple bit and frame the picture, maybe top and bottom. So let's cut that and see what it looks like. Now I don't know if we need one at the bottom as well. Yeah, so that, now I've got a design. I'm going to just trim this edge because that was a little bit frayed. That can go on there, that can go on there. OK, so we, we know where we're going to put things. It's not so complicated that we need to take a photograph. So I'm going to slide that off and then this can be glued on. Now you can use double-sided sellotape, you can use stick glue, you can use wet glue. I'm going to use the stick glue. I'm lining up my card with the edges of the lines on the mat so that I can try and get this leveled. Put my base down as even as possible. Smooth over with my card. Now, I need to glue the back of this one. Right, so try and get this as centred as possible. Again, level it up to the lines on the map. The map lines are really useful. I, I never used to use them very much, but I've come to realise that they actually do help quite a bit. So this is what we've got so far. We could leave it at that and just put a happy birthday across the top or happy and then birthday. But we're going to take it a step further and we're going to put a little bit of trimming on the top and the bottom. I'm not sure it will stick with the stick glue, so I'm going to go for my Kalau glue. And I'm just going to put some line of glue top and bottom and round the sides just to stop it fraying. And that looks quite level. So that's the bottom and do the same with the top one. Fantastic. So there we go. Now, if you wanted to do one little step further, you could maybe add some gems. So play with the look of it until you've got it how you'd like it. I think I like that top and bottom. Yeah, that's better. So yeah, just bring it slightly in and then it, it balances better. So you've got your one, two, three going down. Things work in threes. And again, I'm gluing on the gems with the Kalal. And as long as you're not over embellishing, these will go through the post. They're not ultra heavy. OK, so that's that one. Put that to one side. Now, the other one I had prepared is orange and green. Ooh, that's a weird combination. But um, I am pairing it with this happy birthday. And I'm going to do it sideways. Now, I could come along and use my die cuts, 
but unfortunately this die cut if it went all the way round in a big hoop then it would be too big to go on the card so I'm not going to have the with love bit. This card is also embossed, so that's really nice. So I'm just going to cut under the happy and trim the edges to fit. And then the with love can go back in the pile to be used elsewhere at another time. Yeah. So we have our base. So in this, we have nice, fresh, bright card. And it, it brings out the greens, the oranges, etc. Now, I'm just wondering whether I want to round the edges. Yeah, I can't round the edges of the actual matting because it'll be too thick to go through my edge cutter. Oh, well, it will go in, but it's a bit tight. Yeah, it's not ideal. Doesn't like it very much, so we'll leave it. Okay, so we're going to layer this up and we have a happy birthday card. That one's quite straightforward. I'll put that to one side and I'll finish that off in a little while. Now, this next one I had to show you. Pretty little pussycat, a nice blue card base. And again, inside of envelopes. So I'm going to put that there. Now, the For You Sister I want to keep for another... I don't want to say too much, she might be watching. But the Pussycat I want to cut along the blue edge. So I want the blue edge just inside my cut line to give that layered effect. Yeah. So I've just got about a millimetre just on the edge there. Brilliant. So we're taking the picture out the centre of the card and we are popping it into our new frame for it. Now you can come lower or, and then that will allow. So I have some happy birthday confetti, wrong colour, but give you an idea. So I'm going to put this slightly higher so I've got room for my words rather than centralising it. So that's that one. And the last of the prepared, I'm going to put this with my pink base. And again, going to cut the square out. So back to the guillotine, not guillotine, so cutter, sorry. And this time I want to go on the beige. That happy birthday could possibly go with the cat. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So this is what I'm thinking of. This is how, you know, you can have one birthday card and potentially make two or three out of the bits and pieces you've scavenged from it. I'll put it down like that. And then you've got your card. And then I'll just put a little gem on the eye and maybe one up in that corner or something. Blue to match the cat size. So that's where you can add the bits and pieces. So I've chosen that for my background and that to go on like that. And again, you can go up or down depending on where you want your wording. So I will then layer that, choose where I would like my position and maybe put a little cluster at the top there. Sometimes you need extra, sometimes it just looks right as it is. And I think that one doesn't need anything more because it's got a fairly busy background and would be over embellished. Now, the other things I wanted to show you is using my die cuts. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to show you where I would position things. So I've got a couple of card fronts to show you. So this best wishes, I can use my label shape die cut to cut out the best wishes. It would still allow me to cut this out from the center because there's that gap there. You have to go from the outside edge of your metal on a die cut to judge whether you've got it in the right place or not. If I just line it up along the edge of that gold bit, then I can get the best wishes in. Then I can use that bit, the pattern on the paper. I can either cut it out, and depending on what I'm putting it on. This one, I couldn't use my oval die cut, place it, and I get a nice shape. Now, if I whole of this, but then it might be too big for the card size I use. The cards I make are the A6 size, so I try and keep to that shape. If you don't have any die cuts, you can just cut around the lettering. I'll show you on this one. So I'll come in from the edge, 
I would scoot round the S, dip in, then twist round, go round the best, dip in a little bit on the let lower letters, come back up and round. Just follow the curvature of the the writing and almost make it like a bubbly you know, bubbly writing when you were at school. I used to do bubble writing, I don't know if you did. And then come round the bottom, smooth out curve, that's it. So then you have your, your best wishes all sort of cut out and you can pop it on your, your card. Look at each card for its own merits and see what you can pull out of it. This one, I can use my oval or I could use my circle. So I could use a circle down here and then maybe a label up here or even a small circle here. But depending on which, which bit I wanted to cut out, you get three images from the one picture. It's worth getting some different shape die cuts if you have a, a big shot or a, a die cutting machine and it will give you a lot of versatility for reusing the card fronts. Um, so my choice would be to have the oval which would then go on to the, the black card and really show up. Oh no, no, the black card was for something else, sorry, begging your pardon. I didn't have a card base chosen for this but I would probably use a, a pink or an, an orangey peachy colour. And the last thing is on a, a slightly design side, um, this beautiful white flower, cut round that. And once again, I would normally take time to go in close with it, but I'm just gonna give you the idea and then I can finish it off with a thumbnail. So we've still got, with lots of love on your, and you could take that out separately. So with lots of love, you can use that um, to a very special, you can use that. Um, then you can take the lettering or, and, or birthday even. You get the idea, you can take it out of context so this is an example of using the tissue box inside and I've just covered that in some book page and then ink the edges. So it just goes top to bottom on my card and then I would lay, so this actually is a bit big. So I thought this flower would show more book page. What I was trying to show is you can have like the book, page and have the flower coming over the edge if that makes sense so you cut that bit off and then you could have that showing but it doesn't have to be completely on another look is if you tear some paper and come down and then put something over the top so I could in this instance because this is quite a big image I could tear some book page and come down the side so I'm just coming down the side, at the bottom, and that will give me a, a better background, if you like, rather than the oval. But the oval can be used this way, that way, with a different picture, or a, a long-stemmed um, shadow flower, black shadow flower would look nice coming up that. So you'd have that along, and then you'd have like a black flower or leaves or something coming up from there it would look quite nice and then you could have your happy birthday so it was just a matter of playing around really with the images right i've waffled on far too long um i hope you've learned something and enjoyed this um non-tutorial just the way i do it i would say um, and a follow along and some, got some ideas from it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm a bit of a dry throat now. Ready for a cup of tea, I think. Oh, goodness, the camera's fallen over. Oh, that was the cat.
naughty cat. So, on that note, seeing as we've camera down now, um, I shall say bye bye. Much love goes to all my new subscribers. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. And um, I hope you enjoy the future and the past episodes. Bye bye for now, and I'll see you in the next one. Now you need a firm but soft. <laughs>